Okay, so we're going to look at just basic area formulas of polygons. And the first one we're going to look at is the area of a rectangle and a square because they have basically the same formula. So the rectangle and the square and even the parallelogram, which we'll get into, we'll actually add that here, and the parallelogram all have the same area formulas. The area of these guys is base times height. Sometimes you'll see the square written as S squared, side squared. That's okay. It's the same thing as base times height. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw some figures and we're going to find some areas. So let's start off with the rectangle. So number one, if I have a rectangle, and remember a rectangle is a parallelogram whose opposite sides are the same and has four right angles. So say this is my rectangle, and imagine I can actually, for a minute, actually that I can draw. This is, let's say that's four centimeters and that's eight centimeters. If I want to find the area of this rectangle, it's going to be base times height, which in this case would be eight times four, which is 32 and it's square centimeters. And that's it. That's how you find the area of a rectangle. But it's not always going to be that simple. Sometimes we have these nice little things called diagonals and you'll be given the diagonal and you'll be told to find the area. So you have to do a little investigative work. So here's my rectangle. All right. And I'm going to draw one of these diagonals here. Okay. And I'm going to say that this is 30 degrees. I'm going to say that that's 30. And I'm going to say that the hypotenuse here is 10. And I want to know the area. Okay, well the area is base times height, right? But what we have to do is use 30, 60, 90 triangle now to find the other sides. Remember in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, in a 30, 60, 90, let me see if I can draw this over here. When you have a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, the hypotenuse is twice as big as the small side and then the medium side is square root of three. So let's look. The hypotenuse is 10, where's the small side? It's this one, it's the height. So that's five. And then what is the 60 degree angle? It's the small side times square root of three. So this would be five square roots of three. So now I have my height and I have my base and I can find the area. So the area is actually going to be five times five square root of three, which is going to be 25 square root of three. And that's my answer. Now I didn't put units on this, so you would literally, probably the correct way to write it would be 25 square root of three units squared, because I didn't tell you whether it was centimeters, all that stuff. But you are gonna have to use Pythagorean theorem and special right triangles occasionally for these formulas. All right, so let's look at a square. A square, and we'll actually do a different color for the square. Because, so let's look at the square. We'll look at squares here. A square is a special parallelogram. It is a rhombus because it's a parallelogram with four congruent sides. And it is a rectangle because it's got four right angles. So let's find the area of a square. Well, the area of a square is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's the same thing. It's base times height. Or you can write it as S squared, side squared. You'll see it both ways. So let's say that this is 9 inches, and I want to find the area. Well, if it's a square, that means everything's 9, right? It's 9 all the way around. So my area is going to be 9 times 9, which would be 81 square inches. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So that's how you do a simple area of a square. Now, what if I were to give you the square... And I've got the diagonal right here. So this is 45, and this is 45, because a square is a rhombus. And remember, the diagonals bisect the angles in a rhombus. So if it's 90, that's 45, and that's 45. So these create 45, 45, 90s. So what if I tell you that the hypotenuse is 6, or the diagonal is 6, and I want you to find the area? Remember, base times height or side squared. Well, i got to find the sides. So let's look at these as 45, 45, 90s. Remember, in a 45, 45, 90, 
Whatever the sides are, the hypotenuse are the sides times square root of 2. But I don't have the sides. I have the hypotenuse. So instead of mul multiplying by square root of 2, I'm going to divide by square root of 2. So my sides are 6 divided by square root of 2. So now I'm going to multiply them out. So my area is going to be 6 over square root of 2 times 6 over square root of 2. That's my area. 6 times 6 is 36. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. So that's going to be 18. And I didn't give you units, so units squared. And that's how you find the area of rectangles and squares. So let's look at one more that you'll see. And that is the parallelogram. And we're going to look at the area of a parallelogram. So when we look at parallelograms, rectangles and squares are actually parallelograms. They're just special types. So let's look at problem number five. And we're going to be looking at parallelograms now. Just general old parallelograms. And so I'm going to give you this parallelogram. They look like your Lucky Charms marshmallows. And what we know about parallelograms is that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. And these pair of sides are congruent and these pair of sides. So the area for a parallelogram is the same. It's base times height. Now this is your base. So let's say this is 10. The height is the perpendicular distance straight down from one side to the other. So let's say the height is 4 centimeters. So for a parallelogram, this area here would be the area, oops, so the area equals, and I'm choosing colors here, so the area equals base, which is 10 centimeters, times height, which is 4 centimeters, so that's 40 square centimeters for the area of my parallelogram. And that's pretty straightforward, right? Pretty simple. So let's do one more example. And for this example, I'm going to give you a parallelogram. Okay. These are parallel, these are parallel, these are the same, these are the same. And I'm not going to tell you the height this time. I'm going to be mean. I'm going to say that this is 12 inches down here. And I'm going to say that, let's see here, we'll do, this is 5 inches here. Okay. So that's 12 inches and that's 5 inches. So the question is, how can I find the height? Do I need any more information? Because I have to do base times height, right? Okay. Well, what if I told you that this whole thing is 12 inches? or this part right here is 12 inches from here to here. This whole thing right here, this is 12 inches. But let's say the top is 15 inches. That's the other piece of information you need to be given because now what can I figure out? If the top is 15, remember in parallelograms, the opposite sides are congruent. If the top is 15 and this piece is 12, that means this piece has to be three inches, 15 minus 12, right? 15 minus 12. So now how do I find the height? Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to take that triangle out and look at it. So that's the height. I know this is 3 inches and that's 5 inches. So I'm going to use Pythagorean. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But since I have C and B, I'm going to subtract. So C squared minus B squared equals A squared. So 25 squared, oops, 25 minus 9, which is 5 squared, sorry, minus 3 squared. 25 minus 9, that's going to give me 16 equals a squared. Now that I have 16 equals a squared, what do I do to both sides? I square root it. So what is a, or my h? I probably should have put h in there. H is my height, so my height is 4. Now I can do my formula. The area equals base, which is 15, times height, which is 4. So the area is 60 inches squared. So you have to use Pythagorean theorem sometimes or special rights to find the height in the parallelogram. But that's parallelogram, square, and rectangle.